So now we're going to look at the Canon Rebel series. This is a Canon T2i. The difference between the Canon Rebels and the, the larger Canon bodies is that now we have one control dial. So that's the main difference. And we have to do more setting changes by going into the menu on the back. But well, most of it is relatively similar. So here's our main exposure dial again. We've got program, TV, which is shutter priority, AV for aperture priority and manual. ADEP is an depth of field mode and the green rectangle here is the fully automatic mode. We'll go back to program mode. Now, before in program mode, to do exposure compensation, we move the back dial on the Canon 40D. On the Rebel, what we have to do is, again, we half press the shutter button, but this time, we're going to press this plus minus button here. So once you press that, you keep the button pressed and move the forward dial, and you can see that we are changing the exposure compensation. I'll put it back to zero. One thing to remember with exposure compensation, whether it's a Canon body or a Nikon or whichever maker camera you have, is that this is one setting that when you turn the camera off and back on again, it goes back to what you had it set to last. It does not reset by turning the camera off. So if you just had plus one stop of exposure compensation and you turn the camera off, it's going to be plus one stop when you turn it back on again. So just be aware of that. Okay, now we're going to look at the time value or shutter priority mode. So let's half press the shutter button. In this mode, we're going to use the forward command dial to change the shutter speed and the camera will give you an aperture for the correct exposure. So if I half press the shutter button, it's coming up with f4.5, which you can see is flashing. That means that when you see the lowest aperture of your lens flashing, then the shutter speed you have chosen is too fast for the current lighting conditions. You have two choices. You can either go for a slower shutter speed or increase the ISO until you, until you get an aperture that doesn't flash. Let's go to the next extreme. So as you can see, it's not flashing anymore. So at a hundredth of a second, it's chosen f5.6. But I'm gonna keep going down. Go down to one second. At one second, the smallest aperture, f29, is flashing. That means that this is a shutter speed that is too long for this bright background and that f29 is not small enough to control the exposure. So in this case, you would either go for a slower shutter speed, so now it's not flashing, so it's good, or you could decrease the ISO if you weren't already at the lowest ISO setting. If you want to use exposure compensation in TV mode, you have to press the plus minus button, keep it pressed, and then move the dial left or right. So that's TV mode or shutter priority. Let's change it now to AV. This is aperture priority. In this mode, you can see that now the rectangle is around the aperture and changing the dial is changing the aperture and the camera will calculate a shutter speed. One of the advantages of aperture priority mode is that you have a very wide range of shutter speeds to go with the aperture that you've chosen. Most cameras will give you a shutter speed range from 30 seconds to 1 4,000th of a second. That's a range of around 17 or 18 f-stops. If you're in shutter priority mode, then you're limited to the aperture range of your lens, which is usually around eight f-stops. So you get a lot more flexibility in aperture priority mode. The only thing you have to remember is that if you do choose a very small aperture, then the photograph may be correctly exposed, but the camera may give you a very slow shutter speed to achieve that. And with a slow shutter speed, you'll need to use a tripod or support the camera so you don't get a blurry photograph. So now we'll look at manual mode. That's the M on the dial. In manual mode, the goal here is to set both the shutter speed and the aperture 
so that this vertical bar is at zero on the back of the camera. Just turning the dial by itself changes the shutter speed, as you can see. And if you want to change the aperture, you have to press the AV plus minus button. And then we can change the aperture. So you hold down the AV plus minus button and then move the dial and that will change the aperture. And we have the line in the middle. So that's changing aperture and shutter speed in manual mode. Now let's have a look at the white balance settings. So to change white balance, press down the WB button. You don't have to hold it down, you can take your finger away. And now we just move the dial and it will tell us which settings we're at. So we've got daylight, shady, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, flash and custom. So nice and simple and go back to automatic. Next we have the autofocus settings, AF. Got three modes just like we had on the 40D. One shot should be used for subjects that don't move. AI focus is the automatic autofocus where the camera will start off in one shot mode, but if the subject moves, it will switch to AI servo mode. I personally prefer to use either one shot or AI servo. AI servo mode is for moving subjects. So if you've got anything that's going to move, then always use AI servo. That's going to track the moving subject. So this button on the back, on the right hand side, is the autofocus area mode. By changing the autofocus area, we are telling the autofocus where in the frame we want it to focus. So I've pressed the display option on the back so we can see some information here. Press this button and you can see that by changing the front dial, we're showing, we're telling the camera where in the frame we want it to focus. Now, when all of the points light up like this, you're telling the Canon camera that you want it to decide where to focus. That's the automatic mode. And that works really well on these Canons. So that's the autofocus area mode. On the left, we have the drive mode. So we have single shooting, where when we hold down the button, it'll just take one picture. Like that. And then we press that again and go to continuous. Now we'll get a range of photographs. And then we have self timer, which is activated with the remote control. A self timer by itself and a self timer and continuous shooting. So those are the different drive modes. So let's look at how to change the quality of the files. Press the menu button on the back. The first choice we see is quality. Press the set button. And we have three different sizes of JPEG file, large, medium, and small. And you'll see there is a smooth curve and a stepped shape next to it. So the smooth curve next to the L means it's a high quality, large JPEG file. And this is a more compressed, lower quality, large JPEG file. If we keep going, then we have another option, which is to take a raw photograph with a large, fine quality JPEG, and then raw by themselves. You cannot change the size of the raw file. Raw is always the total number of pixels in your camera. So that's quality. Now let's have a look at playing a photograph back. So in playback mode, press the blue triangle down here. And in playback mode, as much as the button is blue, as I've just mentioned, so some of these buttons on the back also have blue symbols. So up at the top here, we have a blue plus or minus. So if you want to zoom in and check focus, then just keep pressing this plus button to zoom right in. Minus will zoom all the way out and it'll also give you the grid view that we saw before. 
just going to zoom back in again. Then you've got the trash bin to delete pictures and this one will actually print them out. So whilst you're in the playback mode, if you want to see the histogram, press the DISP button. And then you can toggle through the different display settings. So now we can see the thumbnail of the photograph and the histogram for that particular exposure, plus other information about which mode you were in, exposure compensation, etc. So that's how to get the histogram on a Canon. Okay, let's go now look at the live view mode. Live view allows us to see the photograph through the viewfinder. So on this T2i, we press this button up here. And now we can see the image through the lens. Look at this bright background. So this is similar to the way that a compact camera will work by using live view. And the advantage is that we can do lots of very fine focusing. And if you're used to the way a compact works, then this is a good transition to using an SLR before you start looking through the viewfinder. The disadvantage of live view is that it does use a lot of camera power. So it may not be suitable if you're in very cold conditions or your battery is getting a bit low. Now live view is also used if you want to do um, movies as well. So those are the basic camera settings and how to change them on this Canon Rebel T2i.